to improve the life and quality of care of preterm babies and newborn babies, small and sick newborns. So this is a, 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 another very crucial equipment right from delivery. These babies need warmth. They've been coming from the warmth of the mother. And then they are brought out to the environment where it is cold. And once a baby is cold, the, the transition for this baby to transit to normal uterine, extra uterine life will be affected. So this is a radiant warmer that will give warmth to this baby and maintain that ambience so that the child will not have complications. Then I have an, a pulse oximeter. We all went advent, advent uh, of pulse oximeter during COVID. So this is a very invaluable equipment. Actually, measuring pulse oximeter now has been taken to be like the fifth vital sign after blood pressure, temperature, pulse, respiration. So the fifth vital sign. So everything about pulse oximeter. And the three things we have got this to the world both the preclinical and clinical, and also to the biomedical engineers. As we are training clinicians, we are also training biomedics, yeah. because if this equipment cannot be maintained, so the whole essence will be futile. So it's taking everybody along, both from pre-service level to in-service level. So this pulse oximeter helps to check the percentage of oxygen in the blood, so that if it's dropping, the baby gets oxygen, and if it is, the baby is getting oxygen, we used to monitor. Are you giving too much? Do you need to give more, etc. So this has been array, and then the ability to use both the radiant warmer and the phototherapy machine at the same time for the same thing. So these are life-saving bundle of equipment for baby that is ill, and in essence is to teach from pre-service, so that by the time the is now coming to in-service it's been already consolidated in terms of knowledge and skills. On this note, thank you very much. take this moment also to appreciate our partner. Uh, they are very, they've been so supportive. And, you know, if you are doing all this, about three weeks ago, there was a meeting we held. And people, invitees from different facilities where we work with, have given tell, you know, testimonials of great things that this equipment have been able to help them to achieve. It has made life very easy for them. But, you know, one way to make the world know of what we are doing is how we are able to project whatever we are doing. And today we have the pleasure of an organization that is here, and uh, they call them as uh, Studio 24, and today they are also helping us to mark the World Prematurity Day as the Purple Baby. So, <laughs> so let's appreciate it. So they are starting the Purple, the purple Baby today. So that is going to be supporting us more and more. So this is the CEO. Uh, can you just say a few words, sir? Thank you so much. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Okay, no problem. Okay, I can stand here. Yeah. So that we can see your face. We can see your face. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, do you mind if I don't? I have to tell you, the, the name Purple Baby. It's even our, our project was called the Green Baby Project. And when we brought the project to our amiable sister here, she said, why Green Baby? Let's call it Purple Baby. So it's actually her brain child. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we immediately changed the name. We're excited to be here. We've told all of our friends. We had a, we had a personal experience. That's what brought us into this space. We hadn't got a clue. My assistant, my executive assistant, is a mother of a purple baby. And uh, she was stranded in 2018. Um, there were a queue, there was a queue of people, a queue of mothers, waiting to access one single incubator and ventilator. 
in Abuja 2018, and it was first come first serve. The Lord could put up the money. They asked for 1.5 million at 3 a.m. All right, we found the money somehow, and she got it in time. Her baby survived. I don't know what happened to us. Yeah. Okay. So we picked a place to ourselves to join hands in our company, with our friends, our networks, to see how we can help to solve this challenge we have in the country. It's larger than the government, so it's a community-based problem solution that we have to we have to develop. We can't wait for we cannot wait for the government. The government is overburdened with so many different things. So coming together, as you, as you all should know, I'm a business person. I know that the people in any country are richer than the government. Right? In case you don't know, the people in any country are much, much, several times richer than the government. Okay? Because some countries live on tax, which is only a portion of what the people give. So that means the people are, are ex, ex, sex, I mean, crazily richer than the government. So it's hard to galvanize the resources that are out there towards, towards causes like this. This is a very easy sell for us because we're in the business of getting information across to people. And when it has this kind of slant where um, lives can be saved, physical, actual lives can be saved, it would take a very, very dangerous human being not to help. Okay? So I assure you that my community, who we've shared this with, and the other communities that we're linking up with, will support these projects going forward. And you will see, and we, we expect, well, our, our, in our little group, we've said that um, over the next five years, the, what we expect to see is a 50% reduction in the actual, not not to document, documented, but actual um, mortality rate amongst um, premature children. That's what we. Uh, one of my questions. But we we are confident that if we put our house in order, get our get our communities together, make it a rallying cry, that we'll get to this point. Before I, just to close off, a few years ago, um, those of you who are the loop that you will know, but breast cancer was, was uh, the thing, very few people were taking the, doing the basic tests for, to, to, to get early detection. And across the world, there's a clarion cry, and somehow those numbers have been dropping. People are getting detected earlier, and therefore getting treatment in time. It all took information gathering and move, movement. The same way those of you who are in my age group, remember when HIV was a death sentence? The first person that was discovered was here. Because I think it was in Unilag when we, I was in school. In Unilag when they found the lady who was almost like a skeleton and the whole place went crazy. But today someone could be in this room with HIV and we'll all be here. Okay? So information management, information movement, cooperation, communities will beat this. Great, great, I think it would be nice if I don't say it. Um, I'm really very, very happy with the help 360. Of course, uh, Studio 24. Studio 24. Studio 24. This is collaboration with us. Uh, I can assure you, uh, under Prudence, I can to be the video device. And uh, we will continue to ask for protracted collaboration with you, you guys. Uh, already, this experiment will certainly save a lot of lives. And more so, to, to, to aid the training of those who will be utilizing it in future uh, when things get better and more modern equipment are, are invented. Uh, the good news is that you are now the University of Lagos yes. and Dr. Larry is an honor of College of Medicine University of Lagos. So we are in good hands. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Just to say, thank you so much, Thomas. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Now you can just search for Studio 24 on Google to break down to just learn more about them. And let's 360 www.let360.org.org. We are there. So if you want to know more about what we are doing. Okay. Then to say, sir, uh, that 
Possibly next week or next two weeks, we are likely to convert the whole set of training of students using this skills lab. So we are already planning. So for, especially for final year nursing students, our med our medical students, so we'll be starting that as soon as possible. And that is the purpose for setting up this place. Uh, okay, Prof. Over to you. Just to say that today is actually a big day all over the world. It's actually a purple day for the entire world. Because um, prematurity, the color code for prematurity is purple. So as we're celebrating now, more than 100 countries all over globally are also, everybody's wearing purple. Everybody's flying purple or the other websites, etc. It's all purple. So yeah, this pretends, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so it's all purple. You know, because purple tech is taken to be something, you know, sensitive, <laughs> exceptional, and royal all at once. So that is the color code. Just like uh, HIV is red and uh, breast cancer is pink, prematurity is purple. So on that note, Dr. Ben. Because we're expecting the international partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We also have the business manager. Wait, okay. oh. <laughs> we also have Oge. Oge is also very well known, even within this community. He's a business manager for GNCI in Nigeria. And uh, of course, we are doing this together. So I'd just like to introduce them to you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, Doc. Uh, why that is being said, we also have our team on ground. Uh, we have Anthony, who is our research analyst of COVID, the effect of COVID. So for next 360. We also have Toby, who is our data officer for Luth. Uh, and we have our wonderful, where is he? Uh, so we have uh, Charles. Charles is our engineer for Let's Test the Scene in Nigeria. So I uh, would like to. Before you came, we had actually had some round of introduction. But we're here with the top, the leadership of the College of Medicine, University of Lagos. Then, so this is the Gen CI team, who are the other, the Purple Baby team. At least beyond that, we're all family with the students. Let me introduce to you the representative of the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic and Research, who is here with us in the person of uh, Professor Dacosta. <laughs> So the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic and Research, he really wanted to be here, but said he must send a representation because unfortunately he had to be out of the country. And he made and called even yesterday to say, have I given this letter to her, etc. So to show the commitment the university has with research and academics and innovation in the university. I call on my provost, a distinguished provost. <laughs> Let's you know, one of the days we came here, yeah. we're told that the provost just left because we wanted to be sure that this room was set and be ready. Thank you so much, sir, for the commitment, the passion to advance medical education in the College of Medicine. The deputy provost, the shots were like, uh, <laughs> 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 Why the engineers come? Deputy provost, thank you so much, sir, right from day one. Thank you so much. The, the, the college secretary. Yes, oh, yes. sir. Sir, what can Was it? The, yeah. yes. So the entire college came out to witness this historic event. And with this, we're actually saying more to come in, more, in the area of simulation education. My dean, faculty of clinical science of the College of Medicine. Thank you so much. You're always with us. So many goodies are coming. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Incredible. Thank you so much, Nadine. The Director of Engineering. 
because we, you know, you can't say we. This place is set. The people that got it all going, the people that walked around the clock, even as we were stepping in this morning, were still carrying ladders just to be sure that we're ready. So, in the uh, director of engineering, Engineer Olatu was soon. Please let me revert and greet who this is the host department. The host department, these are the where it is happening in the department of pediatrics. My amiable, who is particularly the person of Professor Abiola Oduole, and the people working energetically at the front lines, the neonatal unit consultants. Dr. Fajolu, Senior Lecturer, College of Nursing, and Dr. Bishop Ezema, so we are the ones working day to day. Let this baby survive. Let them try. Let them transform and they're able to achieve their great potentials. Now, we have the neonatal nurses. We have the nurses. Pediatric Please, nurses. pediatric nurses. Welcome. Thank you. Because without you, we won't uh, get this going. Great students, please let's appreciate all of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Let's recognize the team from the Purple Baby again, please. See, the Purple Baby fun. team, led by the team leader, Mr. Chris, the Purple Baby team. Thank you. We greatly appreciate the partnership. And everyone that is here, in my specific team, GNCI, we um, saw the remarkable, and we pray that from today, this education will be intensified, and that from the knowledge acquired from the utilization of this equipment, we'll be able to save more lives. These babies are tomorrow's future, the leaders of tomorrow. And we keep saying that great, uh, great leaders, Albert Einstein, Napoleon Bonaparte, they were all pretend babies. Yes. And um, if we give them the Steve opportunity, Wonder. Steve Wonder, you know, that got blind from retinopathy of prematurity, which is one of the complications these pretend babies can have. That's what happens to Steve Wonder, the musician. So the pretends, if we give them a chance, they actually grow to become potential leaders in the community. On this note, thank you so much, all right. everyone. Thank you so hand much, over why Prof was also talking about purple, somebody just accused me this way. You see, why are you not wearing your purple? I said, this is purple. Have you checked on that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so that know that we are declaring this meeting closed. Oh, that's your team. Now, I'm sorry. You want to get it? Today is a very wonderful day for the Department of Pediatrics, and uh, this is a this is something that will set up the department. We are going to do greater things. We are telling the provost to expect more things from us. <laughs> uh, we are we can be small, but we are very. <laughs> and uh, of course, the students and everybody, we are going to enjoy this place. I'm already imagining the students here learning on, on the top what to do and being able to carry this out to the other places. So thank you, uh, Mr. E60. Thank you for Studio 24. I have told Dr. Uh, Professor Eziak at that. We are going to do more than purple. Yes. <laughs> we are Oliver Twist in uh, pediatrics. So expect us to ask for more. Uh, thank you, DCI, DCI, yes. yes. who are going to make sure that all these improvements are working well, especially the engineers. I have to thank you for what you have done. Um, Deputy Provost, I met you still working. Thank yes. you, ma'am. And when I came in here, I met the Provost City. Yes. I said, what? And of course, I met the uh, representative of the Deputy Vice Chancellor, and I met my amiable uh, Dean of Faculty of Clinical Sciences. Actually, the representative is wearing two crowns. She's also the yes, Dean of the Den uh, Faculty of Dental Science. Yes. So, in fact, in this room, we have almost everyone 
representative. I'm sure if I look around, I'll see a representative of the medical, basic medical sciences yet. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we all try to have to talk to everybody here. So thank you so much for this. And uh, Studio 24, more from you to us. Hashtag. Oh, sorry.
technical partner who is also working alongside this uh, three system. Who flew in from Kenya uh, a couple of hours ago in a highly welcome. I also would like to thank the CEO, Studio 24, uh, Mr. Akuta. Thank you so much for your support. I'd like to thank our very, I can only ask, uh, like Mrs. Mama Shai. Thank you so much for also coming. Uh, any other distinguished member of the high table, I'd like to really, really appreciate and thank and celebrate our professor who really has made this happen today. All along has been working tirelessly to ensure that today becomes a reality. And we are so happy seeing mothers and preacher babies and babies. And our guest today, seated in this hall, Professor Iziaka, thank you so much for your support. For the College of Medicine, University of Lagos, for your support for Luke and for your support for the University of Lagos in general. I'm really thrilled and excited to see everybody in this hall today celebrating the premature infants and celebrating mothers on a great day when we are chosen to celebrate pre-mature children. Let me use that word. I want to really just thank the next 360 for their kind donation to College of Medicine University of Lagos, the state of the art simulation equipment for the training of not just undergraduate students of medicine, surgery, nursing, and other allied health professions, but also for the teaching and training of postgraduate students, postgraduate doctors, and the staff of both the College of Medicine and Lagos University Teaching Hospital. A couple of hours ago, we successfully commissioned and launched the clinical skills laboratory of the College of Medicine University of Lagos, and all these equipment are well presented and donated to the college. And with this addition, I tell you that the training of medical education in Nigeria I will no doubt have taken a control leap. I think let's put our hands together to celebrate <laughs> the next for this general commission. We want to really, really celebrate everybody today for remembering the premature infants. And it's our prayer that the care and management given to these babies, no doubt, will go a long way to making sure that we drastically reduce children, mortality in this country, and God helping us, we will be taken as one of the countries that is a leader in the development of pediatric education in Nigeria. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Please allow me to stand on already well-established and well-repeated protocol. Rather than waste everybody's time, I just want to say a big welcome to each and every one of you. Today is a wonderful day, and I know it's a cause for celebration, especially for many of our mothers. So my special greetings go to the mothers today. While being, of course, a mother. I was also the mother of not a premature baby, but a sick baby. My child was high, highly jaundiced, and this was my precious baby. And she was taken away from me. My blood pressure, that was usually very low, went rooftop. So I can really side with the mothers. I know what you must have gone through and how grateful to God you are. That child, my sick baby, 
has just finished celebrating her 30th birthday. So I am happy and grateful to God for the work of the then neonatal team because I can't carry you. So I drop my cap and give my sincere thanks to Professor Ziaka and her team for the work that they have been doing with the neonates. As she has mentioned before, Nigeria has the highest rate of neonatal mortality in Africa. 32 of every 100 babies under five that die are actually neonates. Yes, Professor Ziaka, I listened to your inaugural very carefully. So we thank God for the team that it, the, the work that this team is doing in our institution. And I also want to give my thanks, my sincere thanks, to NEST 360 degrees. And I'm emphasizing the degrees because everybody has been saying NEST 360. NEST 360 degrees means that it is all-encompassing. All-encompassing. And so I will not miss out that degrees because it gives, you, it gives more meaning to the term. I want to thank them. I want to thank JNCI for their uh, logistical collaboration with NEST 360 to bring the simulation center that has been brought to the clinical skills center this morning. This is going to afford um, students of medicine nursing students and even biomedical engineering students the opportunity to experience how to manage babies using these equipments and how to maintain them. Maintenance is very, very important. So I want to congratulate the neonatal unit for the celebration of today and wish everybody happy deliberations. Thank you. Guys here, you will be killed. There's no way, if she dies, she could survive, yes. But in case she's too far gone and, she, and we lose her, we will be killed here, our car will be burnt here. On that premise, I held back a second. She did, she died. She died right there. Now, that's a nightmare I've been carrying in my heart for over two decades. But what's the biggest challenge here is the lack of awareness. If everyone up there knew what I was about to do, Nobody in that zone would feel funny if we lost the patient, lost the person. So, what does that mean? Whenever we see an opportunity, we must first of all create the awareness. Now, this premature baby situation isn't new. It's not new in Nigeria, it's not new in the world. But most folks outside there are clueless about what to do. Even in the medical profession, um, all respect to you guys, a lot of folks in the rural areas who are medical practitioners are either clueless as to what to do in an emergency like this or don't have the tools and to, to get the job done. And even when the tools are there, are they able to use those tools? Is there electricity? Is there blah, blah, blah? So what we, what we, 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 we also had a second encounter now. This time was in 2018. I have just two or three minutes. And my, my assistant, my personal executive assistant in my office in Abuja, called me at 3 a.m. in the morning. She was, pre she was, she had been pregnant for six months now. She had a case where she's told a premature baby is on the way, and there's only one ventilator, and uh, an incubator with a ventilator in Abuja available that night. Only one, they've gone, to, they've gone everywhere. Abuja is the capital of our country. It is only one available in Abuja. What's happening in Duseba? What's happening in Wari? What's happening in um, Abakaliki? What's happening in all these towns that may not have such facilities? Now, there were six or so people who needed that ventilator that night. But the hospital where it was says, before they attend to anybody, three nights payment must be done. 1.5 million naira, three nights. Must be made and cleared, it's not check, not anything, no promises. They must receive the payment before the patient is treated. Fortunately, I had a transfer app. I made the payment to the hospital. The baby was rescued. She's alive. Her name is Mandy. 
She's not Puja, right? Now, the other patients, she did tell me that one, one lady died that very time. She, she told me this herself. She saw that one lady died, doesn't know about the rest. So we started researching this situation from that very day and saying, hey, come, this is, a, this is a, a huge problem we have in the country. And it's larger than what the government can solve. It's not, there's no way on earth the federal government can afford or will be committed to going around to every single local government area and sensitizing people. We can do this. It doesn't require the government. This requires for people who are of similar minds to come together and create communities that decide that no premature baby will die needlessly unless our creator deems it so. But there's a way that since there's equipment, there's knowledge, there's we can make this happen. And so we've, we've committed to, we started in 20, that very next year, with, uh, with a few hostels in Lagos, and then 2020 we couldn't, but we decided that this 2021, we're launching this project, and we're gonna take it to all corners of this country to make sure we can get, in five years, 50% reduction in the actual numbers of premature deaths that we have in Nigeria, by the risk of God. Okay? So, the, the project was called the, the Green Baby Project. We, we looked for everybody in the country who was passionate about this field. We eventually located and smoked out Professor. <laughs> I want to bring it to her attention. She says, hey, I don't like this name. I said, what's wrong with this name? She says, this is a purple day. That it shouldn't be a Green Baby Project. It's a purple baby project. And we changed the name on the spot, changed all our paperwork, and that's just 10 days ago. 10 days ago. Yeah? So we thank everybody for being here. This is just the beginning. All we're trying to do is to, this is just like a launch, but everybody has to get involved. We will screen this to the rooftops. Everybody has to get involved. Mostly our women, mostly like the Nigerian women out there. You have to support your own. And then the men up here, the men, the men amongst us, like the great men I see carrying babies here, Wonderful, right? Wonderful. So in Nigerian women, this is, this is primarily our project. And every single woman has to look out for the other woman. The last thing I'll say before I sit down, which is, I've taken too much time already, one of the immediate things we would like to see happen is those premature babies who pass through that, who, who lose, most times are from vulnerable parents who can't afford the, 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 the kind of health care, like I mentioned before. So we need to find a way, by advocacy, etc., to have, we have a national health insurance scheme which takes care of people in, who have an income and who are employed, etc., etc., through HMOs. There must be a way, and we'll find a way, and we'll, we'll press this to the last point, where people who cannot afford the care are given free service whenever there's a premature baby situation at hand. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, actually supporting us with this next 360 degrees courtesy of my sister's friend. Um, you're lucky. Your baby survived. Mine did not. And I'm going to have to talk to the supporters of this program. The story is long, but I'll just summarize it. 21 years ago, I had a beautiful daughter following after three sons. And um, she was fed, wouldn't know what happened. The next thing the Lord started coming out of her nose and mouth. We rushed out to the emergency room. Many things were done. But at the end of the day, the summary I got from that, my baby needed oxygen, but she was not given oxygen. She had a collapsed lung half. The oxygen was outside, but nothing was in that cylinder. That's where I'm coming to. So we thank God for the mothers here today. She wasn't a new date. She was a almost about two months old. So my appeal, which is what I'm going to say. Everybody has said a lot. I'm happy and delighted for all the mothers here. I was so happy when I saw my sister pointing to that oxygen cylinder. Said, my baby came 21, 21 years earlier. She would have benefited from that kind of oxygen supply. So, I want to plead with all you partners. 
Please, can we have more of that oxygen in the emergency children room, not just in the neonatal ward? And I want to say, all of you that are here, we will continue to celebrate even this greater tomorrow because they are our future. I thank you for listening. God bless you.